good afternoon. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm coming from Belgium, Flanders. Not such a big, big orienteering, uh, high quality running team, but orienteering is a, is a part of school sport in Flanders. Uh, you know, I don't know if you all know the situation in Belgium, but we are divided up in two parts, three parts, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I'm busy with, with the school sport in Flanders. I started in uh, 1988 as a teacher in a secondary school, and I built up a girls team, a girls team with five girls who have never done orienteering before. And I learned them orienteering in school during uh, Wednesday afternoons, in the weekends, I took them with me to the competitions, and we getting selected for the World School Championship Orienteering. And there, the adventure started, so we went with five girls with not so much uh, experience to a World Championship. Now, so many years later, some girls of that team are now part of the national team. So, for them, it was the start of an international career. And that's what I'm going to explain to you. I will introduce what is the ISF, the International School Sport Federation, and in special, what is uh, orienteering in the ISF. What is ISF? You can read it all, but I don't going to read it everything. We uh, founded in 1972. A lot of members all over the country, all over the world, 113 member countries. And we have since a couple of years uh, a motion of understanding signed with the IOF. We have uh, some different types of events. And the biggest events are the gymnasiates. We have uh, summer games, gymnasiate, and we have uh, since uh, two years also the winter, uh, some, the winter uh, gymnasiate. One million school sport participants. It's a lot because we are working with all the national school sport federations. And we are organizing worldwide competitions for the age of 13 to 18 years old. ISF has a mission, like every international uh, federation has a mission. And we have made a goal for 2030. And one of the biggest important things is we want to increase the involvement, more countries, more pupils, more volunteers, and so on. We want to get, get in closer contact with the national school sport federations and to help them to, to get the, the, the school sport program better in their countries. We also uh, want to spread out the values of Olympism to the youth. And for that reason, uh, ISF is more than just sport. It's also a very important part because it's school, it's education. It's education through sport is a, a very important topic in uh, ISF. We have different events. And here you can see, like I told you, we have uh, the gymnasium, the summer games, and every two years it's organized. The last uh, summer games were in Morocco, and we have the gymnasium school winter games uh, every two years. Uh, here you can see the sports who are uh, on the list. But we have, every two years, we have in a lot of sports a world school championship. And world school championship, that means a championship for school teams. Not selected teams, they can come to the competition, but the main purpose is to get school teams to our competition. And you can see the full list of all available sports, and one of them is orienteering. You can see the calendar for uh, next year, 2019. We will have our next uh, World School, School Championship orienteering in uh, Estonia, in Otopa. It's uh, the end of April, beginning of May. I will give you later on some more information on this championship. Education, very important. Orienteering, ISF, is more than another international competition. We're working with uh, volunteering, and we also involve the youth as orienteering. It's very important. So when you come to, uh, you go as a your school team, you go to another country, 
Some other pupils will be your hosts. They will uh, help you. They will help you with the translation and, and so on. So there will be their guides. And it will be youth. Uh, we involve them. Educational games. There's a special event promoting the values of Olympism. And fair play. We are working also very hard on fair play. Education and fair play, it's very close together. And every time there will be a team awarded with a fair play trophy. Cultural activities, like I told you before, uh, ISF orienteering is more than an international orienteering event. And also cultural activities are included. And at the end, every competition, every school sport uh, championship has to have to include a friendship team event, but I'll give you later on some information. Fair play, it's sponsored by Kindersport, but uh, it is important because the pupils themselves, they will be the jury. They decide which delegation will have the award, the Fair Play Trophy Award. And sometimes some countries are fighting harder to get this trophy because they know they can't beat Sweden or France or Finland in, uh, with, with their school team. They know it before, but said, this can give us an opportunity. We go for the fair play trophy. And that makes it uh, very nice. Fair play and orienteering is not so easy because you don't have personal contact. You can't get a yellow card. Uh, there's no referee who's, who's uh, acting on the field. But fair play is going further on. For example, in uh, 1997, China participated for the first time. It was in Italy, in Cuneo, and they sent it. It was the beginning of uh, the Chinese orienteering uh, uh, history, and they came with uh, a wonderful team, but most of them were cross-country runners. They were not orienteering people. And they came out of the bus with, 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 with no compass, with no material, they never heard about some, some material to put on your contour description. They had nothing. And so a lot of other school teams saw that and they helped them. They gave them some material and so they could take part. This is uh, fair play in ISF orienteering. Cultural activities. Uh, in every competition there is one cultural day. And the local organizers decide what, what they will do, but it is a program made on the age of young people. They don't go to a boring uh, museum, but they will try to, to find uh, something attractive uh, program for the youth. Special projects. Um, we are trying to help some schools, local schools, to get some new materials. So we have a foundation in the ISF, and when schools are coming to participate in other countries, they can bring on some materials and give it to uh, other schools. So we have a lot of uh, projects running in, uh, in India, Brazil, and so on. Ambassadors. It's always nice for young people to look above to some very well uh, athlete, athlete uh, Olympic athlete, or a world champion. And so we have a lot of uh, ambassadors in different sports. I won't read them all, you can read them later on. Uh, but there are some big, very big athletes, uh, like the Nordic countries, they all know Martin Furkade. Uh, but at this moment, we don't have ambassadors for orienteering. So it's an open question if you can help us to maybe bring us in contact with some real big elite runners, young people. And it would be very nice if they have participated in the past in an ISF event, because that will be a, a very big example for the young uh, runners. Orienteering. ISF World School Championship Orienteering. This is our history. We started in 1987, so we have already had a long run. We started very small, and now the last championship was in Palermo in Italy. A very special one, uh, have a, a French team event in the old city of Palermo. It was a, a quite a, a big adventure, especially for the organizers. Uh, it was really crazy. Uh, but we have, uh, the number of participants has uh, increased a lot. So, 
What is a uh, ISF orienteering? And I, I, like I told you, I have uh, had the experience of my school team. Uh, here you have the story of the donkey and the carrot. And ISF orienteering is the carrot for the development of school orienteering and youth orienteering. But if you saw, you can see the branch, and this is not like we want to have it, because in this photo, the donkey can't reach the carrot. And that's more like it is for a lot of young uh, orienteers, G-Walk, A-Walk, Walk. It's only for a very small select group. It's a very select group. Right? It's always a fight to get into the team, to get selected, especially for the big orienteering countries. It's hard to get there. ISF orienteering, we have a carrot, but it's reachable. We give it. We give it. If they work hard at school and they train and they have a teacher in the school who wants to support it, then they can get to the ISF championship. Why? Because a delegation is big. We're working with teams. We have five runners in each team. And if you want to make up a team, always one or two or three club runners are in the team. But you have to be with five. So you're taking some good cross-country runners with you, and you teach them orienteering, and so you get uh, to a championship. So we give them the carrot. We don't uh, keep it away. In Palermo, we had uh, 24 delegations, uh, more than 600 athletes. It's a big event. It's not a small event. It's a big event. And all together with the coaches and the heads of delegations and so on, we had more than 800 uh, participants. So it's a big competition. In Palermo, those, these countries uh, participated. It are all, most every time, the same countries who will participate. But later on, um, what is important for a lot of these young people, ISF orienteering is the first international experience for them. And it's a perfect uh, rehearsal for going to an AOC or later on to a GWOC because it's international. And they, that, there is working with a model event. They never worked with a model event before. Uh, it's, it's, it's stressy. It's the first time they get stressed to a, to a start because it's, it's a world championship. So it's a good uh, uh, exercise for them who wants to go further on, on their, in their international career. But we have a problem. And I'm looking now to some people, I don't know you all, but we are missing some leading orienteering countries. And it's a pity because Denmark, Norway, Switzerland, uh, Germany, for example, are countries who have a real orienteering tradition, but they are not participating. So we will try and, and to get in contact with them. Uh, most of the time it's a problem that the cooperation, there is not so good cooperation between the o National Orienteering Federation and the School Sport Federation. Or in some countries, like in Norway, I know that there is not a real school competition, I think. Yeah, there isn't. But maybe they can find another way to get some teams. Uh, so Norway participated once uh, in Belgium. They were with one team there. But the other continents, Africa, North America, South America, Asia, China is participating, but uh, Asia is more than only China. So we have still uh, some work to do. About the technical details. Uh, we're working with two age groups. Yeah, we're working with two age groups. The younger group, 14, 15 years old, and then the oldest group, 16, 17, 18 years old. School teams and selected teams. To show, so you can make a school team, but we make it also open for selected teams. And selected teams are teams that are coming from the federations. But most of the school sport organizations send school teams. Uh, but it's a team competition. So you have an individual competition, but you can, uh, there will be a team ranking. And that's the most important uh, thing. Teams with uh, five runners. The program of... Uh, our World School Championship in Ottawa it will be. We have uh, two official competitions, a long distance competition and a middle distance competition. And the technical level is one step lower than GWOC 
and AOC. Right? AOC for the youngest categories. Uh, so we are not, we, we, we don't make it too, too, too difficult uh, because a lot of them are for the first time abroad. And we have our friendship team event. Friendship team event, it's a fantastic competition. And this is, uh, we are more than other competitions because we make mixed competition. Different countries, boy, girls together, and they one hour before they can have the map and they have a, a full control net and they have one hour the time to divide all the controls. And then we have a mass start. In Palermo, we had a mass start with 600 young people on the square before the theater there it was magnificent. The emphasis of this event shall be fun and cooperation and competition is on the second plan. These are some pictures uh, of the friendship team event. And here you see how they work. This is a wonderful moment. For example, when someone from China, Portugal and, uh, and France is sitting together, the language is a, is a problem, but they have to work out and decide who will take the last of the first, the, the difficult controls, who will take the easy ones. Competition area for Otapa. Uh, we will thank the IOF to have a good rehearsal past year to have the, the walk there. So we are now working on the success of the organizers and uh, this will be a very good one. Uh, this is the competition area of the World Cup 2006 and the European Orienteering Championship is on the same terrain. So this is an, the map example. Uh, it's free to find. It's uh, the map of 2006. Here I'll give you some uh, links where you can go on. Uh, bulletin number one and also the technical rules. Um, you can send in your entry till the 30, 30th of November, but the entry can only be done by the National School Sport Federation of the National School Sport Entity, not by the uh, Orienteering Federation. So I hope for those countries who want to participate, go and find uh, on the ISF website, you can find all the contacts uh, of all the National School Sport Federations, and that's the way you have to get uh, to Otopa. I hope to see you all there uh, in Otopa. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's not a question, but a request. It's to call. Uh, call uh, last week I had a meeting with the president for the Brazilian Sports uh, School Federation, Robson Aguiar, that you, you know him, and discussing the participation of Brazil in the next year uh, event. Uh, it was be I was well received with the idea, but I think that some pressure from you would be good. So we can select a team to, to send to, to the, the, the event next year because uh, I have seen that Brazil and South America is not present. I don't know if uh, never participated. I think that no once. Yep. 2005, I think. Yes, long time ago. So we can do it next year. Uh, please put some pressure and we will help us. I will put some pressure on him because Robson is the ISF delegate, so he's going. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, I will do my best. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we can have yeah. Brazil, South America, and the further uh, editions we can have other countries. Yeah. Would be very also. nice to have okay. him back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.